Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this Logic Pro 10 video tutorial on using the mid-side stereo miking technique and decoding or processing the mid-side technique. I'd like to first say that this is more or less an introductory video on using the MS technique, and I'm only showing you the basics of how it can be used and processed. Mid-side processing is actually a pretty big topic and can be used in a variety of situations. In this video, I'm gonna show you the basics of what mid-side is and how to process it without using any third-party plugins. In order to record the mid-side technique, you need one cardioid or unidirectional mic and one bidirectional or figure eight mic. The way this works is you set up the mics in a way so that the capsules are right on top of each other, but the cardioid mic is facing the sound source and the bidirectional mic is facing the left and right of the source. The cardioid mic is the mid signal and the bidirectional mic is the side signal as it's picking up so uh, sound from both the left and right sides of the source. When we recorded this example, we used a Telefunken CU29 copperhead mic as the mid mic and an AKG C12 VR as the side mic for recording an acoustic guitar. This photo is actually taken from the left side of the array. The top mic is the CU29 and the bottom is the C12. The CU-29 is facing left in the photo, but it's actually aiming just above the, the tone hole on the acoustic guitar, which is actually out of the shot. It's pretty common to use condenser mics for MS because the technique is often used for distant miking, which condensers definitely work better for. When we record an MS, we're going to send each mic to its own mono channel in Logic. Even though the bidirectional mic picks up from both the left and the right, those signals are not separate in the way, say, a stereo microphone would work. They're actually both summed to a single mono channel. So the goal of mid-side processing is to decode the side mic channel into two separate signals, one from the, the positive or left side of the mic and one from the negative or the right side of the mic. The way this is done is to duplicate the signal of the side mic and invert the phase on the negative channel. The phase cancellation involved produces a stereo image rather than a summed positive and negative mono signal. So in my Logic session, the CU-29 has been recorded to its own mono track, and the C-12 has also been recorded to its own mono track. And in the mixer, you can see that both of these are pan center, and we're at unity gain. So let's just play both of these and hear what this sounds like. All right, so let me just solo out just the mid mic. And then just the side mic. So there's a huge tonal difference between the two because again, one microphone's facing the guitar and one's not directly facing the guitar. So the way we can do this is we need to actually duplicate the side channel. And what I'm gonna do is just create an audio track, which I've already actually created here. I'm gonna rename these side left and side right. And then I'm just going to hold option to duplicate the region from the side channel down onto the new side right channel. So what I've got right now is just two duplicate uh, recordings. It's not really gonna do me any good. What I actually need to do is invert the phase of the right channel. So a quick way to do that is to go to your audio effects inserts, go to utility, gain, and then choose the mono option. Now I'm not actually using the gain plugin for any, anything gain related. I'm just using it for the phase invert button that it has. It's just a really quick and easy way to invert the phase on a track. By inverting the phase of the side right, we're able to separate the positive and negative polarity signal from the left and the right side of the C12. So I'm gonna mute the mid channel so we can just hear the side channels. And what's gonna happen is we're not gonna hear anything because the two channels are pan center and we've inverted the phase on one of those channels which causes the, the channels to cancel each other out. So what we actually need to do is on the left channel, pan that hard left, and on the right channel, pan that hard right. So they're still interacting phase-wise, it's just not they're, they're not in the same place in the stereo image anymore, and therefore they're not going to cancel each other out. So let's listen to what the, uh, the side channels sound like now. So 
So it sounds a bit thin and tinny, but it does have a stereo image. So again, here's the original. And here's with it processed. So now let's try adding the mid mic back. So you can see in the meters that there is a, you know, a bit of a variation in the left and the right channel. So we know that we're getting a stereo image now as opposed to just uh, a mono signal. Uh, mid side can be used for a lot of things. And like I said before, uh, it's a pretty deep topic. And, you know, I'm just giving you the basics in this short video. But uh, mid side is my preferred miking um, technique for acoustic guitar. You can use it on drum room mics, drum overheads. Uh, orchestral recordings, anything where there's a live ensemble on stage. Uh, and, you know, just try it out and experiment with it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. A really quick tip for mixing mid-side tracks into your session is that if you want a deeper, fuller uh, sound, more body, you can pull up the mid-channel or pull down the side channels. If you want the instrument to sound a bit brighter, wider, and more airy, you can pull up the side channels but pull down or pull down the mid-channel. If you liked the video, give me a like below and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you're interested in learning more about Logic 10, I have a complete video tutorial series on it that I'll link below. Thanks for your support and thanks for watching.